Hi, everyone. Welcome to AirGap Networks at RSAC 2021. This hour, we're talking about ransomware kill switch use cases, and we're going to do a demonstration of the system. My guest is Mr. Shad Gunderson. He's the solution architect for airgap.io. Mr. Shad, welcome to the show, my friend. Yeah, thanks for having me, Chuck. Now, you caught my attention when I saw your title, Solution Architect. That's a, you know, that's a that's a great name that conjures up all kinds of things that that really help, I think, a consumer say, listen, I got to fix this. I got to solve this. Let's start off by defining the ransomware kill switch. It's an incredible concept. It conjures up all kinds of things. I'm thinking of that giant red button where I just go bonk and my whole problem solved. Tell us about how it works. That is partially true, but of course you have to wire things. So tell us how that works. Um, you know, much like a physical uh, kill switch, you know, uh, there is um, a, a level of effort that you have to do beforehand. Um, think of this uh, as the, uh, you know, implementation of your cyber emergency response playbook, right? So you've got, um, you know, things in mind that you need to do at various stages in um, incident response, especially for malware, APT, um, ransomware. Uh, and this is, an, is a, allows you a capability to put those policies into actual effect. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a very uh, interesting concept and uh, has been great in the field so far. Now you said something I think was really interesting it automates your processes and policies. I've always thought that policies and processes are great, but if they're not sustainable and people don't continue them, it doesn't matter what you have in place. It's just not going to work. So give us a kind of a, a walkthrough of a typical policy that might be in place now that people maybe implement manually and how this automates it and kind of makes it work better. Yeah, sure. So in the specific uh, instance of ransomware, um, there are, uh, you know, it, the target, the attack surface for that specific threat is typically business critical information, business critical applications. And um, that's really what you're going to want to protect and, and enforce uh, access control around specifically during uh, such an incident, right? The 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 capability to restore from a backup um, really, uh, you know, mitigates the threat of ransomware, right? It's the it's when you have been compromised to the point where you have no fallback point, or that that restore point is going to be so painful as to disrupt business. Um, you know, it's that's when folks are are willing to give up the Bitcoin. Right. Now, that's an excellent an excellent point. So I just read recently that there's some government regulations that say if you pay the ransomware, you can get fined. Is, it, is that true? Uh, from from my understanding, I, I haven't um, I haven't seen that actually enforced to date. Um, but yes, it is, you know, theoretically true. Um, you know, I think the 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 other thing that we've seen is that folks will um, attempt to rely upon their cybersecurity policies, um, you know, to restore damages for these uh, these sorts of events, and I think that's also going to be increasingly harder for um, for companies to you know uh, claim the benefits from, um, and certainly will you know be forced to get a new insurance company as soon as they do make that claim. Well, obviously, the ransomware is here to stay. It's a flavor of the day. I don't think this is going away anytime soon. So we need something new, something fresh, something that's going to change the game here. And I think the kill switch really, just the whole concept intrigues me. Uh, it, it, the big point here is it stops propagation. Is that is that a good way to, to describe it? Explain how that works. It is. Um, so uh, ransomware um, in... in in execution is really uh, the product of an advanced attacker having been inside of your network for long enough to determine um, the administrative or privilege credentials that will be able to uh, take you down, right? The ones that will work everywhere, these are gonna be domain administrator equivalent um, or you know service accounts with high privilege that can be 
weaponized with that weapon with that ransomware in order to spread laterally. But the you know the the thing that got you to this point in the first place was the fact that you didn't have um, a lot of internal controls, and part of that is network segmentation, uh, which can allow you to put um, network access control in that really limits the capability of an advanced attacker to move within your uh, inter in internal network. So once they've got a foothold in that environment and there isn't anything to stop them, um, you know, there are plenty of detective controls out there, uh, network detection response, uh, endpoint detection response, you know, IDS, IPS, right? The, the you know, de detection suite du jour, um, but uh, in, in, a lot of cases, um, those those events are you know might go unnoticed. M you know, responders may not be able to really stitch together what uh, uh, you know what the the full picture is, and ultimately, um, you know that that attacker is going to be able to move unfettered within your environment. So this solution itself will um, will put into place the um, lateral movement policies that um, really result in the, you know, the application of principle of least privilege, right? Give these machines um, and the users that are operating them exactly what they need to perform their job duty, but no more. Um, and if there is a incident, a cyber emergency that arises after these policies, um, then you've got the capability to immediately shut down um, portions of the network um, or specific targeted hosts, if need be, uh, and and respond without the you know the fear of you know that threat continuing to spread in the environment. All right. Now you said a word I'm gonna have to call you on immediately. And I used to tease guys mm -hmm. at Black Hat years ago about this happens in real time. What's real time mean? Oh, you know, like a day. Okay. It's getting close to real time now, but define immediately for us because I think this is so yeah. important. No, that's a, that's an excellent point. It, it really, um, there is a, a timing factor to this. And oftentimes it's going to be, um, you know, alerts coming through your seam, um, maybe alerts coming through IDS, IPS, and other detective controls in your environment. Um, and applying some human intelligence to determine, you know, to triage this, is this real? Is this something that is actually occurring or is, or is this, a, a, you know, a possibly a false positive? Um, but once that, uh, once that determination is made, this is a control that allows you to then very quickly put that network ACL into place, flush, you know, the connection log and, you know, it, it will enforce the policy that it is told to in uh, in a relatively short time, a couple milliseconds. All right, you made another interesting point here. Really the kill switch is about your response and an automated response, because like we said, detection is problematic. I think last time I read something at uh, one of the shows, the average network has 125 different security applications on the network. That's not sustainable. How can you possibly monitor those and make sure they're all doing what they're supposed to do? So if you have a lag time to understand that there's a ransomware attack, you need to crunch that response time down to practically nothing to get to get what you need out of this and make sure this is this is working properly. Tell me how people might use this. I'm the average guy. Let's say I'm a mid-level manager. And let's say I'm not even an IT guy. Let's pretend I'm Bruce Willis. This is Die Hard 27. And uh, I'm working at a studio. And we're doing the Super Bowl Live. And everybody's busy. IT's busy, talent's on the air, and my employee in the security department opens up some ransomware. And it starts propagating, and I can't get a hold of anybody. If I was given permissions, and I understood the policies and procedures inside the system, could I, as Bruce Willis, go in there and die hard 27 and save the day by activating the kill switch and at least mitigating some of this damage? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think that the, um, the policies while they may be somewhat complex, the um, the stages are very simple, right? You're just moving from you know green state, which is everything's normal, to you know yellow, which is caution, to orange, which is you know 
more concerning to red, which is the, you know, ultimately stop everything. So absolutely. If, if, uh, if Bruce Willis was, uh, you know, an IT administrator or had the, had the role within, uh, our solution to be able to uh, invoke the kill switch, that would absolutely be something he could do. Um, if you have a, uh, a response plan that allows for, um, you know, the the elevation of this, or, or even if the individual in question has uh, a a role that allows them to uh, to, to you know to shut this off uh, within our solution, that's certainly something that can be done. Um, I think that more mature organizations would probably move this into a um, security orchestration and response playbook um, that might be automated you know through one of the the you know major SOAR vendors that are out there um, but again this is you know this doesn't have to be uh, you know doesn't have to wait until uh, those sorts of uh, solutions are in place. This can be, you know, brought in at, at any point and can be manually invoked um, depending on the the circumstance. Well, I think that's excellent, and I think this is a point that a lot of IT solutions miss. Joe the plumber doesn't have an IT staff. He doesn't have all the infrastructure, but you know what? Maybe he needs a kill switch because he does all the plumbing for the Pentagon. And if we get in his computer, we get in something else. So I think I think bringing this down to an operational level. Is super important, and it seems like you guys have solved that. Now, do you have any any, you know, true true crime stories, or you know, maybe tales of how this thing worked in real life? Don't give us any names, of course, but maybe you can kind of walk us through an attack that uh, was thwarted. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, honestly, uh, the yeah, the um, the real targets, you know, lately um, as the news has been, you know, full of are um, folks who are doing uh, infrastructure, um, financial organizations, healthcare, and those sorts of uh, th those sorts of verticals. Um, we've uh, had success in assisting um, some some folks in uh, the the oil and gas industry um, that have very much the same sort of concerns as what just happened with the Colonial Pipeline, where um, you've got lots of aging infrastructure out there, um, legacy systems, uh, you know, arguably secured by some, you know, some, con some preventative controls, but, um, but really is performing a task that's so vital and so important that it can't be disturbed. Right. And this is the, you know, a great target for, uh, for, um, you know, criminals, cyber criminals, as well as, um, you, know, you know, nation states as well. But um, it's also a great, uh, great sort of customer for us because these are the sorts of, of things that need that protection, need that, um, that immediate capability to, um, to isolate and to be able to ensure that, um, that uh, uh, response can occur without, uh, without lateral propagation. So, uh, you know, it's not something we can really go into a whole lot of detail around, but uh, certainly, um, you know, the the situation is applicable for practically any industry um, that's uh, that's out there today. But specifically with you know what's been in the news, uh, oil and gas transmission, oil and gas uh, you know producers, energy producers, etc. Now, not to get too technical, because I'll hurt my little security guy brain, but uh, we hear IT and OT. OT is what you're just talking about, the operation uh, technology for, you know, infrastructure, electricity, oil and gas. Does the does a kill switch apply and work equally as well in IT and OT systems? Because now it seems that IT and OT are kind of all muddled together now. They used to be separate, but they're kind of one thing sometimes. They are. They are. And um, I would argue that's uh, always been the case, right? At the at the head end of these um, uh, industrial systems, operational technology uh, deployments is typically some sort of control uh, head end, which oftentimes is going to be running a Windows or uh, Unix like operating system, right? And is going to be um, uh, as susceptible to uh, you know 
as an attack service as any other IT system, right? Uh, you know, much like the all-in-one printers that we see, you know, in the enterprise that have a, a, a Unix operating system in the back of it, or our, you know, uh, phones, um, you know, the IP telephony, uh, those as well as cameras often have some sort of kernel that's, you know, accessible for, um, uh, you know, to leverage and pivot off of for lateral movement. So absolutely, um, the uh, the fact of the matter is, is that protecting those uh, those OT uh, control points and not just from attackers, but oftentimes, you know, it's vendors that are accessing this remotely. And, um, you know, they the, most people try and say that those are air, you know, air physically air gap systems in, in some variety, but in 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 practice, they they aren't because those vendors and you know, support personnel need to continually access it and you know get telemetry from those devices, continue to monitor them. Uh, so again, they're they're just as connected as any uh, as any IT system would be, and just as susceptible, perhaps more so. Now let's have some fun. I know you have a video we'd like to show that demonstrates this in use. Is this a an actual case or just kind of a walkthrough? Yeah, this is a this is a demo environment um, and and a, a walkthrough, but it's uh, again applicable to um, to pretty much any enterprise. Uh, the um, the steps that uh, an attacker is going to execute are going to be fairly identical, to, you know, regardless of of the industry that occurs. The you know the the ultimate goal is to find the credential that permits you know as broad an access as they can get. So um, you know, the dwell time to, to, that it takes to find that credential um, doesn't really matter. You know, once, once they've got it, then it's a, then it's a quick move to, um, you know, to the, to the ransom demand or, or perhaps even just exfiltration of, of data, depending on the, you know, the intent of the, uh, the hack. All right, let's take a look at this uh, video. Right. With the ransomware kill switch, you have multiple levels of enforcement, uh, green being uh, all systems normal, uh, and then yellow, orange, and red uh, are degrees of response, red being the, the most critical. Um, so as, uh, as the cyber emergency rolls out, uh, it's possible to um, you know, move to a yellow uh, enforcement status. Uh, and then if there are you know, there's further evidence, further indicators of compromise that uh, you know, drive the response to um, to a higher level than uh, orange and red uh, being you know, the the uh, the next logical steps in in that response. So at each of these response stages, we have the ability to enforce policy. And here we see that we're going to block access to Active Directory, and we're going to block access to Windows file shares. So here we have a normal workstation that has access to the domain controller. We're, we're in still in green status. Um, also has a file share that uh, gives access to some sensitive information. Um, and we see that you know, those file shares and those files are completely accessible via the network. And we're gonna imagine for a moment that we have uh, gotten some indicator of compromise and we need to move to that yellow stage. So very quickly and easily we're able to to, to move that status up, and as we switch back to this uh, domain, or this uh, this PC, we see that access to uh, Active Directory has now been blocked. I can no longer ping the, the domain controller, and if I try to open up the uh, the resources that were on that shared uh, drive, you'll see that um, these are. They're not coming up. the The packets are being dropped, so this is why you see the the request timed out as well as the lag time uh, for this uh, this file. Um, so again, quick, easy. Um, now we can move very quickly back back to green um, and uh, restore that network connectivity. Uh, again, in a couple milliseconds, uh, that uh, you know that uh, connection is restored. Um, this will hang for a little little bit as uh, as it takes a minute to remap uh, the drive and then uh, launch the file. But uh, it's accessible. Um, you can modify this data uh, on this drive if you have write permissions, and and uh, things are uh, back to situation normal.
Now, Shad, I got to say, that is about as real time as, as I have seen. I mean, you push that button and that directory stopped working. I assume I can push a whole bunch of those directories and kill them all at the same time. And that, that really is stopping propagation throughout your entire network. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, those policies can can be as uh, as easy or complex as you'd like them to be. Um, and with the multiple uh, <clears throat> layers of response there, um, you could choose to uh, block access to um, a portion of your uh, Active Directory infrastructure or the entirety of it. Um, same with your your storage area network um, or or other. Um, critical business applications like ERP systems, et cetera, those that would be the um, the, the, the target of, uh, of an advanced attack in the environment. Now, you talked about how this is configured to your own policies and procedures and responses, and I think that's excellent. Are we doing a good enough job in the industry of having the right responses and right policies and procedures? It seems like there's a lot of smart people out there with a lot of good ideas, but are we going to get to a point where there's too many rules and too many ways to do things and it's just not, it's just not sustainable. Oh, there's definitely a possibility. These are com complex systems. Um, multiple layers of, of access control are, are, you know, in play here and there's um, always an opportunity to uh, mess something up, which is the, um, the hope of any uh, advanced attacker to finding that misconfiguration, finding that weak, uh, you know, weak point. Um, I think that this is really based on the the KISS principle and um, allows you to do something that seems very simple uh, on, on, from the outside, but can be in incredibly complex, uh, you know, when actually attempted in, in real life. Um, meaning that most organizations might be able to address this by, you know, removing a cable somewhere or, or enforcing a, uh, an, a proper ACL, uh, at a, at a switch or, or router, but oftentimes those communication paths aren't known. Um, and it's very difficult to identify where that should be, especially under the, the you know, increased pressure of uh, you know, active response. So this is a way to really stage that response prior to, and then you know, in the event of that emergency, be able to you know, pull the trigger and, and put, those, put that playbook into, uh, into effect. Well, I hear you. It sounds like a no-brainer to me. Uh, with the extreme shortage of security personnel, there's just not enough people, uh, Shad, to sit around and push buttons and do things. I don't care if you had an entire staff fully staffed in your IT department. You need automation. And I, I really think this is a solution. I think this is brilliant. And the KISS principle does apply. Because while ransomware kill switch is a complex system, its, it's ease of use seems very simple to me. Uh, from a, from a, a non-expert opinion, and I think that's really, really important. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. This is fascinating. Good luck at RSA. Uh, if you guys haven't checked this out, you really should check it out, airgap.io, and we'll, we'll see you soon. Yeah, thanks very much, Chuck.